All right. Uh, here's the problem, though. We have too many problems and too many tin years ignoring those problems. A president who bemoans sequestration cuts but plans a $60 million largely family vacation trip to Africa. That's more than I spent with my family at Disney World, by the way. And a Congress that talks up rating and spending but does little to offer much more than lip service to serious entitlement reform. Add it all up in my panel, let's say you have those in powers poll numbers all going down. Monica Crowley, Melissa Francis, Stephen Laser. All right, Melissa, spell it out. How bad is this getting? You know, your first guest was talking about it, and it's really this idea that people look to Washington and they want to see someone that they believe is sincere, isn't a liar. And when you look around Washington right now, it feels like there's no one you can trust. You talked about the poll numbers. I mean, the president back in April of 2009, 73% thought he was honest and trustworthy. Right now, it's at 48%. So what does that mean? They're sort of at an impasse, and generally, gridlock is good in most cases. I'm a small government gal. But this time around, I mean, the, the, the cash register is just racking up item after item as they're sitting there doing nothing. So I think in this one case, gridlock maybe isn't good because we've got a lot of things we've got to fix before we go bankrupt. I'm just wondering, Monica, just as the leadership style, whether he's done anything right or wrong, that is the president, but does that aloof distance style that is accredited with him saying, well, at best he didn't know a lot of the stuff was going on, now coming back to hurt him more than if he were to admit to knowing exactly what was going on, that he can't win. Well, the seeds of, the, of all of these scandals IRS, DOJ, NSA, Obamacare now falling apart. All of those seeds were planted in the first term. Remember, in 2008, he talked about wanting to fundamentally transform the nation. Well, you can't do that without breaking some heads. So obviously, all of these things are the logical result of what he intended to do all along. The problem here is by being so dispassionate, by being so disconnected from the issues, as Melissa laid out, and the problems, all of these scandals, it leaves the impression of one of two things, either the really deep corruption is going on here or profound incompetence and neither one of those things is good for any president you know i remember at the time Stephen Eliza, when we were looking at president bush and not too long ago when you were last on about how we handled the uh, iraq war when things got bad very very quickly right. and the criticism of the press that he was a little bit distant he didn't seem to appreciate the fact that americans didn't appreciate that we were getting bogged down and he seemed disconnected now you have a Democratic president embroiled in, in, in much the same issues, different different crisis, but 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 the same issue, of not appreciating the severity of what surrounds him. Is that a fair criticism? I think it is a fair criticism, and I, I want to say that I normally like the whole no drama Obama persona that that he projects. I think that that actually gives a lot of people confidence most of the time. But there are times where you have to show some sort of sense of an a sense of urgency. Um, there, there is several big problems here, and I think if the president doesn't really get his arms around them, they're going to define his second term. They're going to define his legacy. He's got to get his arms around him. He's got to project um, that he is in charge and that he can get his arms around these things. I, I want to say that, um, you know, th there's, there, there is the other side of this. You know, every problem, to some extent, is an opportunity. So the president actually has a number of big opportunities here, but he's got to prove that he's got, um, that he's got the leadership skills to take charge and do something about it. He, he's, he's got to take some really big steps here. Like one of your previous guests says, maybe have to has to fire some people, but he's got to make some really substantive policy changes. But he's not. He's not. Changes. And Melissa, to your point, I mean, time's a wasting if he doesn't. Now, maybe that because that's what the public is calling for. You don't see to that sort of move, but maybe that's the move that he's got to make. I think it goes back to that original thing that you want. A, you want a president who actually stands for something, and you don't want someone who looks like the nine-year-old who just got caught in the kitchen and is covered in cookie crumbs, and he's getting to give you the technicality. Well, I didn't take the cookie from the cookie jar. In the back of his mind, he's saying it was laying on the counter. So, you know, I'm not lying to you. You know, this is just you a, dug up that old Polaroid photo of me in the kitchen. <laughs> and that, that was not real. That was not how no, it went and down. Did you lie about where that cookie came from, or were you clean about it? And you said, you know what? I ate the cookie. I'm sorry. Give me my punishment, and let's move no, on from it here. Wasn't no, a one in Washington cookie. Does it wasn't that. a single cookie. But, you know, to that point, in all serious, Monica, whether the problem here is not appreciating the severity of what's at stake here. And furthermore, if you do appreciate it, you're giving mixed signals to the public. So you have a case where FBI Director Mueller is up there last week saying, uh, this great rush, we're going to have to get to the bottom of this IRS scandal. He couldn't name the investigator right. leading the charge. And not a single one of those conservative groups targeted were even interviewed. So it begins to get people to think, well, wait a minute. You said this was a big deal. You, you don't really act that way. 
When I worked with President Nixon in the last years of his life, one of the things he said to me watching the Clinton scandal start to unfold was, in a bout of frustration, he said, why did I go through the damn fire if nobody's ever going to learn from me? The lesson, really? the le yes, now the lesson here is that presidents, when, when the crap starts to come down, you call a press conference, maybe a prime time press conference, remember those? And you lay it all out. You lay out all the facts, you start to fire people, and you hold everybody accountable, including yourself. The problem with that, Neil, is that only works when you're not guilty. So the question about whether this president, why he hasn't been more proactive, I think he's answering his own question. Well, or it could be that he hasn't gotten to the bottom of it. Uh, Stephen, now you've argued that there's a lot to get a handle on here, but time is a waste, and to get at least get the appearance of being on it, right? If I could speak directly to the president, I would say, do all the things that we've talked about, but schedule a weekly meeting or a weekly uh, uh, primetime telecast where you tell the, po the people of this country all the progress that you're making on all these scandals, all the changes that you're making. But again, you have to have the changes to talk about if you're going to do that. Right. And, and he's, he's got to take those steps. He's got to do something big. But, but, you know, people really are losing confidence across the board uh, 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 in their government. The president, right. the Congress, Democrats, Republicans. So something really big has to be done here. And um, whether the president does it or not, that's how he's going to be thought of in history. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let it be marked here that this is the day that Stephen uh, began to say, look, this thing is... This is the Hindenburg, uh, which you didn't say, but anyway, it's kind of entertaining. Uh, meanwhile, what the Buckeye? It was 